Good morning, everyone. We're glad that you joined us again today, and today is a special day. It's Mother's Day, and, and so we're going to have some special little things as we go out throughout the service this morning uh, just to honor our mothers. And so uh, I hope you will stay tuned and, and, and watch all of it and just uh, in, enjoy it because I think it's a real treat. Um, today, of course, we are worshiping our Lord Jesus Christ and uh, our Heavenly Father, and, and uh, we just pray that we will be all ch come together in His Spirit, in the Holy Spirit, as He moves among us and in us, that we might truly worship in spirit and in truth. And so today, worship with us, sing with us, uh, commune with us as we take the Lord's Supper. I hope you'll have some uh, juice and bread ready. Um, but we just want you to have a great day worshiping the Lord and knowing that you are doing this with your brothers and sisters in Christ, with our church family here in Brooksville Christian Church, but also with brothers and sisters from other places in our country and, and maybe even around the world. And so we come together to worship. So let's worship and sing.
glad that God made all the earth, the river, land, and seas, with lots of animals and birds, and all the plants and trees. I'm glad that when he made these things, he thought of mothers too. For if he hadn't, I don't know what everyone would do. God knew if we got sick, or maybe felt sad, then a mother would know what to do to make us glad again. I'm sure God knew what every kid would really need, so he made lots of mothers, and I'm really glad that he made my mom for me. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day! Happy Mother's Day.
this morning as we come to take the Lord's Supper. May we think about what that means for us. That Jesus' death on the cross, that his put, having his body put on that cross, having his blood shed as it ran down his face and down his arms, and may it remind us that he did it thinking about us. That he did it so that we wouldn't have to pay that penalty. And so may we take this in reverence, but may we take it in an attitude of love because that's what Jesus did when he went on that cross for us. He showed us his love for us. May we show him our, our love for him as we partake and do it in a manner worthy of his sacrifice.
Father God, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. And in him, Father, you have demonstrated just how much you love us. The wor your word says that you so love the world that you gave your only son. May that be something that we remember, Father, each Sunday as we come together to take the Lord's Supper. But may it be something we remember every day when we wake up. Remind us, Father, just how much you love us. And I pray, Father, that we can just return to you as much love as we can, though we'll never measure up to what you've given us. Thank you, Father. Remind us of your love today. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for all mothers and so that is true. 
know that be nicer to me and to you and to you. O says, O says that only, only when we act up, act up really bad. Uh, uh, we'll be back. Well, she's just scolding Brownness, then she's really sad. T stands for the truth, and she says that each one must have been good and truthful when each day is done. H stands for heart. Hers is pure gold. She loves her children all the same is what we have been he said that each child is precious and so dear. She'll guide us and protect us from harm, sin, and fear. R will stand for right. We are sure that mom thinks best. Moms, I tell you, guide us. We know we're truly blessed. Happy Mother's Day. 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 Karen and I were watching Survivor this past week. Yep, we're those people. But during the tribal council, when they were getting ready to vote off people, I was surprised to hear that due to all the lying and backstabbing that goes on in the game, several of the players mentioned they had trust issues when they went back home. They had trust issues with their spouses, their co-workers, and just strangers giving them directions. See, trust is an important element in relationships. Lack of trust can break a relationship. If a husband is continually late, the wife may begin to question his love for her and suspect something else is going on. If parents find out their children that their child isn't where they say they're going to be, well, then the trust is broken and the freedom of the child is affected. So what exactly is trust? Well, one definition is that trust is the firm belief in the reliability, truth, character, ability, or strength of someone or something. Another says that trust implies instinctive, unquestioning belief in and reliance on someone or something. So when Proverbs 3, 5 says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding, we are being told to believe in God's truth his character, his ability, and strength, that we can rely on him. You know, we often talk about self-reliance, and yet we are told here not to lean our, on our own understanding. Why? Because our knowledge and wisdom is limited, whereas God's is infinite. 1 Corinthians 13.9 says, Now our knowledge is partial and incomplete. And even the gift of prophecy reveals only part of the whole picture. Let me illustrate what I mean with a demonstration. This paper represents our understanding. You can see it's got boundaries. It's limited in its size and, and it's, uh, it's got a beginning and an end on either side. And so it's limited. So let's see what happens when we have a decision that we have to make. Something that is really weighing on us. A problem that we have. Let's see what happens when we try to deal with it with our own understanding. Okay, let's try it one more time. Let's see if we can get this to work. Okay, what we see is that it can't handle, our understanding can't always handle the pressure of the decisions that we might have to make. And so what do we need to do? Well, let's try something different then.
Okay, I have a tube here, and so this tube represents God. It has no beginning or end. It's circular. And so this is going to represent God's wisdom, God's knowledge, God's understanding. And so let's see what happens when we try that same weight, that same burden that's pressing down on us, and see how God's wisdom, His knowledge, if we put our trust in that, how that will help us. See, it's, it's holding up under the pressure. So let's try something else because sometimes we have more than one problem at a time. So what happens when we try adding a little bit more to it? God still can hold up under our pressure and that means that we can hold up under the pressure. Let's try one more and see what happens. We see God can handle whatever we bring to Him. When we trust in Him, He can handle whatever we bring. I want us to look at two times we need to trust in God. First, we need to trust in God when things are going well. Psalm 52, 8 says, But I am like an olive tree, thriving in the house of God. I will always trust in God's unfailing love. Del Bruner in Is Jesus Inclusive or Exclusive wrote, When our cat Clement of Alexandria goes outside, he looks around as though it's a jungle, and he is terrified. But when he comes in the house, he lies on the floor between the kitchen and the dining room, where we walk the most frequently, and falls asleep in total trust. My wife Kathy or I could squash Clement's head, but he trusts us. Our cat lives in complete, total confidence in its human companions. Every time I see Clement just lying there, I say to myself, that's what Jesus wants me to do, to trust him. The kind of trust the cat shows in us is the kind of trust the Lord Jesus Christ invites from us. But too often in life, when things are going good, we rely on our own understanding never seeking God's wisdom and help in our decisions and actions. And then we're surprised when things go awry. The first verse of Psalm 52 that we read just a moment ago says this, Look at what happened to the warrior who did not depend on God. That fool thought his wealth and lies would protect him. James tells us that we should ask God for wisdom. If we did, I think we would have less problems in our life. Trusting Him in the good times also means that we trust His Word and are obedient to His will. Again, when we trust on our own understanding, it can lead us into problems. How many of us have said at one time or another, or at least thought, that some action that we were going to do wouldn't really matter? See, when I was in the fourth grade, I remember making a mistake on an assignment. I'd read the instructions wrong, probably because I was in a hurry. We had passed the assignments up to the person ahead behind us, and because I was in the last seat, mine went to the boy in the front seat. When I got my work back, I realized my mistake, and I corrected it very quickly. And I took it to the teacher to tell her that the boy had graded it wrong. But she told me the boy had brought it to her because he was surprised I had it wrong. I was caught leaning on my own understanding. I thought, eh, she won't know, but she did. If I had done what I knew was right in God's sight, I would have accepted my grade and learned to read instructions more carefully. It would have saved me embarrassment, and my teacher wouldn't have had to question my character. I wish I could say that I learned from that experience and never struggled again with trusting God enough to always do what is right. But that's not true. But if it was, 
my life would have been a lot better with a lot less embarrassment and pain. And that leads to the second time to trust God. We need to trust God when things aren't going well. Psalm 112, verses 6 and 8 say, Surely the righteous will never be shaken. They will be remembered forever. They will have no fear of bad news. Their hearts are steadfast, trusting in the Lord. Their hearts are secure. They, have, they will have no fear. Are you afraid of bad news? Do you question why God allows things to happen? Where is God in the middle of a crisis such as the one that we are in now? Trusting God doesn't mean we won't have moments of distress or anxiety, but it does mean we know what to do when we have them. We trust in Him despite what our understanding leads us to believe or doubt. Craig Brian Larson and Pastoral Grit shared this. For some 50 years, physicists had scratched their heads over the unexplainable orbit of the planet Mercury. Newton's theories of gravity had served well for centuries to understand the orbits of all the other planets. But in Mercury's elliptical orbit, the point nearest the sun drifted by a small amount. Astronomers conjectured that another small hidden planet, which they named Vulcan, might be orbiting the sun and exerting gravitational force on Mercury. But Vulcan was never discovered. Then Albert Einstein formulated his general theory of relativity. When he applied this gravitational formula to the eccentric orbit of Mercury, the numbers fit. Mercury was a mystery no more. On occasion, my life has had an orbit, which, like Mercury, defies my best efforts to explain it. Nonetheless, as surely as there is order in the universe, there is a heavenly reason for my circumstances that is utterly consistent with God's word and character. I just cannot under understand it yet. What he's saying is that when we lean on our own understanding, life can seem out of whack. But we need to trust that God is working for our good, even in a world that is tainted due to the sinfulness of its inhabitants. Looking at this world with our own understanding is like looking at a, the backside of a cross-stitch piece. It's a mess. But looking at it from God's perspective, turning it over and looking at the other side, we, we will be able to see that God is and always has been working to make things beautiful. To paraphrase 1 Corinthians 3.12, Now we know in part, then we will know in full. If you notice, the two times that we need to trust in the Lord adds up to all the time. Psalm 62.8 says, Trust in Him at all times, you people. Pour out your hearts to Him, for God is our refuge.
We're glad you joined us today. And I hope you mothers, I hope you enjoyed the little treat that we had for you. And we hope you have a great day, that your family honors you as you deserve. Because we know that we love you and we are so happy to have you as a part of our family here. A few things to remind you of on Tuesdays and Thursdays, we're doing our um, afternoon devotions at five o'clock. And so we'd love for you to tune into those. And then we are also doing a, a verse of the day, a, a verse to meditate on, one to think about as you go through your day, just so that you might know more about how God loves you and, and what he expects of you, what he desires of you, how he wants you to be transformed. And so I hope you'll take some time to do that. And then also we're doing the uh, family reunion thing. This past week, uh, I kind of missed a little bit on that. We're still in the process of trying to move to the new house. And so um, <laughs> we got a little involved on in some of that. And so I got a little bit behind. But uh, that will be back this week. And I encourage you to be a, a part of it. Just share with us and let us know a little bit about, more about yourself as we get to know each other uh, in Jesus Christ. And so... Um, Next Sunday, we'll be here again, and um, we're looking forward to that time when we can meet again. I'm not sure when that's going to be. Uh, we're going to be doing some, have some meetings and things here very soon to see when we're going to be able to start meeting back together again, and hopefully sooner than later. Uh, but until that time, may God bless you. May he keep you. May he smile upon you until we see you again.